Hi everybody, welcome back for episode four. This is the last part of our four-part series on predetermined tracks. This time we're going to learn to do PDTs using a fixed card ADF. Now many people claim that fixed card PDTs are the most difficult. I guess they are a little bit more difficult, but there is some uh, tips and tricks here that can make our life much easier. So before I jump into uh, showing you how to actually do the PDTs, because that's actually the easy part. The hard part is learning to figure out your magnetic bearing to the station. So, uh, there, but there's a very simple way of doing this. I want you to notice when you look at your heading indicator, uh, whatever type of heading indicator you fly, it has some markings on its face. It has a lever line here at the very top. And it has a 45 degree mark here and a 90 degree mark there and then another 45 degree mark that's kind of 45 degrees off your tail. There's another mark at the bottom and a 45 degree mark here and another 45 degree mark on the right wing tip and another 45 degree mark here. Now, when you look at your fixed card ADF, guess what? All those exact same marks exist right on your fixed card ADF. And they are there to make your life really easy when it comes to dealing with a fixed card ADF. So the first thing that you have to learn to do is how to imagine that this ADF needle is up here on top of your heading indicator. Because if they would only just move it for you and put it right on top of your heading indicator, guess what? You'd have an RMI. So basically we're going to take our heading indicator and turn it into an RMI by learning to move in our imagination this yellow needle up and put it on top of the heading indicator. Now right now it's trivially simple because when I glance down here I see the yellow needle is pointing right at this 90 degree mark. So I just find the corresponding 90 degree mark right there and, and there it is and that's about at 099 degrees so my bearing to the station is 099. Now if I move the, um, the airplane around let's say I put it right there so now we notice that the needle is exactly on the 45 degree mark to your right side. So locate that 45 degree mark up here. There it is, 235. No math. You don't have to, you know, in class you learn how to do your magnetic bearing is equal to your heading plus your relative bearing. So you're supposed to take your heading of 189 and add 45 to it. Forget that. You don't do any math. You just do the math visually. If I uh, put the, the airplane right here. It's right on that uh, that 90 degree mark on the left wing tip. So uh, locate, or sorry, the, the right wing tip. Uh, so locate the 90 degree mark on the right wing tip right here. There it is right there. That's basically 280. I mean, it's probably 279, but trust me, it doesn't matter whether it's 279 or 280. That would be close enough either way. And what if it's in between? Let's say let's say it's right there. Well, just look at it and say, well, it's halfway between those two 45 degree marks. So there's the two 45 degree marks. What's halfway in between right there? That's good enough for me. 305 degrees. What if, uh, what if it's right there? Well, I would look at that and say, well, that's the, that's the 10 or 15 degrees past this 45 degree mark. So just come up here and count down 10 or 15 degrees. Well, there's five, there's 15. So it's somewhere there. It's 340. That's good enough. Uh, what if it's uh, right there, let's say? So I would look at that and say, oh, it's four or five degrees below that 45 degree marker. So I find that 45 degree marker, I look four or five degrees below it, it's right there. That's 140. Simple as that, okay? So I could do this all night, and it takes only only uh, a few seconds, you know, if let's say it's right there. You just look at that and say, well, it's 10 degrees to the right of your tail. So there's the tail. What's 10 degrees right of the tail? It's basically north, or 358. Uh, so it's really just as simple as that. Okay, so now that you've got that skill, and I would suggest that you practice it, notice that you know using my mouse I can just uh, move the airplane around and around here on this computer simulation and, uh, and practice learning how to read my bearing to the station. So it's always just a matter of picking up this needle, locating the appropriate corresponding marker, like in this case 235, and, and there you go. Okay, so now we're going to do a PDT. So I click Do Another, and uh, the computer would like us to intercept an inbound track of 261 degrees. Okay, so 261, that's the desired. Remember the saying that we're, we're dealing with. This is no different than with the RMI that we did in Episode 1. So we want to go from the desired to the head plus 30. 
So the desired is 261. So I find 261 on my heading indicator. I'm trying to imagine my heading indicators in RMI. So there's my desired, 261. I'm going to go to the head. Well, the head, as you can see down here, is 5 degrees up from the wingtip. So there's my desired, 261. I go to my head. It's 5 degrees up from the wingtip. Then I go another 10 degrees, 5. Or sorry, 10, 20, 30. It says down in here. I'll call that 215. Close enough, 215. So I'm coming around now to a heading of about 215. Now, as we come around, I have one final piece of advice for you. If you want to make your life easy when it comes to doing fixed card ADF, always turn to a heading that ends in the same number as the track you're trying to intercept. So, like right now, I've got my heading on the way to 214, but I'm trying to intercept a track of 261. This is not really a good idea. I'm going to change my heading to a number that ends in 1, like 211. Now, when I get around this turn here, I'll show you why that's a smart thing to do. Because now that I've turned around, you can see on the map that this is a good intercept heading, but how am I going to know when I'm on track? Let me just freeze it for a second so we can discuss that. How will I know when I get down here on track? To know that, I have to know what my intercept angle is here. So what you want to do is come up here to your heading indicator and locate the, the uh, number you're trying to intercept, 261. See, it's right here. And you need to figure out what that angle is from the nose. Now, if you have strategically turned to a heading that ends in the same number as the course you're trying to intercept, this can only be a round number. It can be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, or 90. It can't be anything else. You can't have an intercept like 74 degrees or something like that that's going to be really difficult to do the math for. So you can see here, this is just like just beyond 45. Well, guess what? It's just beyond 45. It's 50. So we're looking for a 50 degree intercept, in other words, right here on the ADF. So let me start it moving. I'll let it go just a little faster. So as this ADF needle comes down here to, uh, to 50, that's the correct intercept angle. And then I can turn to my heading 261 and I'll be on track. So I've got about 10 more degrees to go, about, uh, about 5 degrees to go right there. And I'll lead it a little bit, so I'll turn just a little bit before I get there. So there we go. And uh, come around to my 261 now. And I should wind up. Bob's your uncle right there with the, uh, the needle on the nose. And I'm right on track. It was as simple as that. Okay, let's do another one together. So click do another. And this time the track we want to intercept is 328. So that's the desired. So I come over here, I find 328. Here it is, 328. Now, where's my head? My head is just oh, about 10 degrees past that 45 degree marker, right? So 328 is my desire to come down here. So there's the head right there at about 020. Then go another 30, so it's 10, 20, 30. It's going to be right here, a heading of roughly 050. Okay, so I'm going to turn to 050, except is it really a good idea for me to turn to 050? Uh, because the course I'm trying to intercept ends in an 8. So I should either turn to 048 or 05. It doesn't really matter which one I pick. I can pick 48 or 58. I'll pick 48. Let me just speed it up here a little bit to, to save some time so you can see what happens. Okay, so we come around to 048. Now I'm trying to intercept my course of 328, so I locate my 328. There's 328 right there. Okay, so how many degrees is that from the nose? Well, it's not quite 90. It's, in fact, one increment less than that. It's 80. It's exactly 80 degrees. So I'm going to be on track when the needle gets down here 80 degrees off my nose. I'm going to, uh, technically a relative bearing of 280 degrees, but I don't think of it as 280, I think of it as 80 degrees left of my nose. Let's speed up time a little bit more here so you can see that. Or even better, I can just push the airplane along so that you can uh, see that. So as the needle comes down towards uh, here, 80 degrees off the nose, I get about 10 degrees to go, 5 or 6 degrees to go, and now I can turn left to my heading of 328.
and I was just a little late turning, so I slightly overshot the track, but you get the idea, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's hide everything now and see if we can do another one together. So, this time we're asked to intercept the track 0, 0, 6 degrees, so I find 0, 0, 6, it's right here. Now where's the head? The head is about 10 degrees short of this 45 degree marker, so here's my head right over here at about 55 or so. Then I go another 30 degrees, so 10, 20, 30 is over here around 85. So I'm going to turn left to 085-ish and start it going. But while I'm turning, I'm going to give this a little bit of thought, and I'm thinking, yeah, maybe not 085, maybe 086, because that ends in 6, and the course ends in 6. That's going to make the math easier. Okay, we'll just speed it up. Okay, so we roll out on that heading. Now we've got to figure out our intercept angle. So I locate my course 006. It's right here. And this one turns out to be the same as last time. We're looking for 80 degree angle, uh, 80 degrees off the nose. Okay, let me show the map so you can see that that's working. So that was just coincidence that it turned out to be an 80 degree intercept twice in a row. Uh, but the intercept can be anything. You know, it will always be more than 30 should be less than 90, but it can be anything between 30 and 90 degrees using this method. Okay, so that's really not that hard, right? The, the skills, just to recap as you practice this, start by developing the skill of determining where the head of the needle is, uh, just thinking that it has a few degrees off each of these 45 degree markers so that you can locate your head very easily, and then it just becomes identical to the RMI procedure. I'm just going to freeze it here since I'm busy talking and not turning in. Uh, so once you're good at, uh, at determining where the head is up here, then a fixed card PDT is no different than an RMI PDT. So if you've been practicing those and you're good at those, you should be good at fixed card PDTs. Uh, so we need to do outbounds now. So let's turn inbounds off, turn outbounds on. We'll click do another. Um, and so it's really the same thing as before, except that to do an outbound predetermined intercept, remember, we need to know where the tail of the needle is, because we're doing tail to the desired plus 30. So it's the exact same procedure. Here we look down at the tail and we see it as about being, oh, 10 degrees below the, uh, the 45 markers. So that would be somewhere around here at 355. If, uh, if we were over here, we would say, okay, it's it's about halfway between these 40, 245s, maybe a little closer to that one. So halfway between this here, maybe a little closer, maybe 295. You know? If we uh, were over here, we would look at that tail and see, oh, it's 10 up from the wingtip. So 10 up from the wingtip is there. That's about uh, 220 or 222, something like that, and, and so on. Okay, so it's, uh, it's still very simple uh, to... Uh, to figure out where you are, you know, this one is about 10 or 12 degrees below the wingtip, so 10 or 12 below the wingtip is in here. It's, you know, it's in the high 240s, it's not quite 250, but if you called it 250, that would be close enough to get the job done. Okay, so let me click do another, and then we'll do a PDT. So this time, uh, we've been asked to intercept track 151 degrees outbound. So this time we go from the tail to the desired. So the desired is 151. Now my tail, in this case, is 5 degrees to the right of the nose. So I put my finger there, 5 degrees right of the nose, that's the tail. To the desired, which is over here, 151. So I move my finger to 151. Then I just go another 30 degrees. 10, 20, 30 is 121. So all I have to do is turn to a heading of 121. It's as simple as that. And uh, we'll just speed it up so you can see that that does indeed work. Now, since we went... From the desired plus 30, that's just another way of saying that we did a 30 degree intercept. So there's no math required here at all. I'm on track when the tail of the needle comes up to 30 degrees. It's always going to be 30 degrees on these outbound intercepts. So that's super simple. So I'll just move it a little closer so you can see that. So as we get closer, the tail of the needle is coming up to 30 degrees. And as it gets to 30, we're right on track. So I'll just lead it just a little bit, so that's probably pretty close. And so now I turn to 151, which is track I'm trying to maintain, and there we are, right on track. Okay, so that was pretty simple. Let's just do 
another one here. Um, we're not very far off track here, so I'll just move it off just to make this a little bit more exciting. Okay, so the uh, the desired is 161. I look at the tail here and I say, okay, it's about 10 degrees up from my wingtip. So I come up here 10 degrees and so I say, there's my tail to my desired, which is 161. It's right here. And then go another 30, 10, 20, 30. That's 191. So I'm just going to turn to a heading of 191. Make it exactly 191. Notice again, uh, this is very important uh, that you're turning to a heading that ends in the same number as the tracks. So we're trying to intercept 161. You're turning to 191. Notice that if you're trying to intercept 161, if somebody told you that for an outbound intercept, even if they didn't tell you anything else, you'd have a 50-50 chance because you're either turning to 191, in other words, 30 degrees more than this, or you're turning to 131, which would be 30 degrees left. Let me just show you that. If I was on the other side of the course, okay, now my my tail is here 5 degrees left of the nose, so I would go to my uh, tail, to my desired, which is uh, 161 there, and then go another 30, and guess what? That's 131. Right, so it's always going to be that way um, with outbound intercepts. Uh, there, there's only two possible headings: 30 degrees more or 30 degrees less. You saw that uh, emphasized in in the last uh, episode with the VOR outbound intercepts, and there's no difference here with the ADF intercepts. Outbounds are really pretty simple. So notice again, we're looking for a 30 degree intercept. And uh, if we'd been on the other side, on the heading of 191, let's just go back to that one for total clarity here. So we'll speed it up. But this time, what you'll notice is that we're looking for 30 degrees on the other side of the nose, so here at 330. But those are the only possibilities. You're either looking for the tail to come up to 330 or the tail to come up to 030. And we're almost there. And as we get close, then we turn around to the heading of 161, and we're on track. I turned just a couple of seconds too soon there. Okay, so that is it for predetermined tracks. You now know how to do them with any uh, avionics configuration uh, from an RMI to an HSI to a standard VOR to a fixed card ADF. So practice, practice, practice till you're really good at it. This is one of the exercises on the commercial pilot flight test. But more importantly, this is a skill you need to establish yourself on an airway or an approach as an IFR pilot. Okay, see you next time.